All right. Oh my goodness. It is that time already. Um, so we had a great morning. We're well into our afternoon. This is day two of the Success Summit. Um, I'm super excited. We put a goal out there, um, you know, to pivot. We wanted to do the Success Summit in uh, in May um, of this this year, and we wanted to do it in Calgary and in Toronto, and include a full day and a half plus the expos. Hi, Fred. And what happened is COVID happened. So we had to pivot. And the pivoting um, included moving our summit to the fall. And I thought, Fred, as we talked about that COVID would be like, ah, you know, we'll be back in and, you know, eight months when we do the, um, you know, we can handle this summit and do it live. And then we pivoted again when the announcement came out because, of course, you know, I felt an urge and a need to get support out to female entrepreneurs, have some voices heard, hear some success stories, ways that we can inspire and motivate and give knowledge to the female entrepreneurs that need it because they're the livelihood of our economy. So we wanted to get that done before the summer started because, as you know, summer, I think we need to rest a little bit, right? But a lot of businesses are still going to just full tilt um, straight through. So um, part of of that is is to inspire people to give them knowledge to uh, do things that we're doing right now which is um, a billionaire success story I am super pumped Fred uh, to be welcoming you to uh, the Universal Women's Network Success Summit I know that you and I have been working behind the scenes uh, we've had lots of meetings um, and I did bring my camera today, so we will have to take a, a, a team shot like at the end again, um, because this is a pretty special day. I know that we've been talking about, you know, the Success Summit and, you know, sharing how and the impact and sort of the experience that we wanted to make sure and the value and the experience were always top of mind. And so I'm super excited to be able to interview you because it's, it's not every day, just saying, Fred, that you get to interview a billionaire because there's a huge difference between, you know, going out there and starting your business and achieving great success. It's strategic, it's commitment, it's focus, it's, I want you to tell me what that is. So, um, Fred, I am really excited to introduce you, so please let me do that. Um, Fred Fishback is the president and CEO of the Javelin Learning Solutions. Um, so there was actually time when they relied on the bubble form. And I remember, I'm probably dating myself, but I'm okay with that. Um, I remember going to school and filling it out with that HB pencil. And I remember the HB being really soft and, you know, is like, I didn't have to do the bubble too hard because it would just be such a soft HB. Anyways, that is how we completed tests. And so this time, you know, now we do everything electronically. So, and I've got to use these words. It was the number two pencil, that's the one, and an elliptical scanner. So for those that need more nuts and bolts to this, I want them to go to the website to review the whole entire process. But while the AVR, A, sorry, VR and AI quantum computing and megabytes of storage are commonplace today, that is a mouthful, Fred, just saying. Um, there was a day when the floppy disk, do you remember the floppy disk, everyone, that little floppy disk? I, do you have any of those left? I probably do somewhere. <laughs> can I have one just to have it? I don't even think you can buy them anymore. Um, was holding 360 kilobytes and was bleeding edge of technology. Armed with a floppy disk, some programming skills, and one of the earliest desktop computers, Fred, wanted to change the way tests were administered and scored. No more paper booklets, test forms, or number two pencils. And no more waiting weeks to get results. Take a test, get the re results like instantly. That was the first of your global success story. As technology moved along, something else was brewing. Computers were becoming networked with a blazingly fast, or even so, everyone thought then. 300 to 1200, I don't even know what a BOD moment, uh, modem is, to be honest with you. So maybe you can share that with me. Computers could talk to each other and send data across long distances. What if a test, those millions and billions of pieces of test data collected around the globe, could instantly find their way back to a central 
respiratory for rapid consolidation, organization, analysis, and intelligence. Hmm. Big test data. Instantly collected, rapidly analyzed. That was the first version, 2.0 of Fred's story, followed by version 2.5, leveraging the internet for these tasks. And today, as the story continues, his newest venture is scaling one on one relationships across the globe to making learning more personal and effective, improve healthcare in the home, and facilitate a personal global advisory team of talent to each person. No, retri no retirement, Fred, you're never going to retire for Fred. No slowing down, it is throttle up. So, welcome, Fred. I, I read every word of that because if I was supposed to read some of those complex computer language things, I would always mess it up. So um, I'm truly honored to have the opportunity to do the one-on-one -on -one interview with you because I truly admire um, everything that you've accomplished. And I really appreciate the mentorship and guidance as a support her, a man that champions for women and their networks, workplaces, and communities. You're a dad of a, a beautiful, um, young lady, um, you know, you've got a beautiful wife and you've got a great family and very family, family focused. So um, I've, I've titled our interview around success mindset today. And it's like billionaire success story, but it has to do with this, right? It has to do with our mindset. So my first question is, is there a success mindset? Well, I, I hope you're... Um... The viewers may not be or may not be too disappointed, but I'm not sure, Monica. I'm not sure. Um, you know, I I think about a lot of people I know. They have some really brilliant ideas. Um, uh, I, I think about them. You know, they read these uh, self help books. They, um, you know, have this collection of these incredible motivational memes that they they you know live by every single day. Um, you know, they, they believe in the, the power of attraction and all these other, you know, uh, great uh, concepts, and yet they seem to fall short on, on achieving the successes as they envision in, in, in their mind. And, um, you know, so, in that, so I'm not sure it's a silver bullet to have this mindset. You know, a, a number of years ago, the, the, the concept of the growth mindset was a huge issue in education as per, perhaps the, the, the next great silver bullet to enhance uh, learning. And, and, and it, it, hasn't, it hasn't lived up to all the hype and, and it certainly hasn't lived up to all the hype. So I think there's more be, behind it. I like to say it, it, it's probably necessary, but it's far from sufficient. I think that um, where the, the challenge may be is translating a success mindset into success habits. And I would think that one of the, the lessons I probably learned over the course of my career is we think about success habits. So it's, while the mindset is important, a vision is important, it's kind of the, the, the daily grind, the day in and day out, these, the small behaviors that, that um, build our lives and, and build our businesses and, and, and build success as we define it to be. So you know, I think it, unless we can begin to translate a success mindset into success habits, um, I'm not sure that that achievement is going to be there. But the other key point, and, and you were at uh, the mastermind I, 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 I hosted, and, and one of the concepts that, that I was hoping to get across there was that these, um, these success habits, these, these skills are, are not consistent across a lifetime. They're not necessarily consistent across, across the life cycle of our own business. So the, the success habits that help us when we're growing, you know, from zero to a million, uh, a company from zero to a million is very different than what it takes. And it takes different skill sets and different success habits to go from that 1 million to that 10 million or that 10 million to 100 million and, and working your way up. And, and I think that's true even across our life cycles, um, our, our own lifespans that some of those habits that are very powerful and effective when we're, you know, single in our, our 20s are very different than when we're a dad with, with three children. And, and, and so therefore, um, the, the concept of mindset and success habits and recognizing they too must vary over time. Um, I guess the third 
uh, point I'd, I'd probably make on that concept and, and keep in mind, I'm just one point of view here. I know it's just hope, hope, you know, you've got some incredible speakers that have got some alternative uh, points of view. And I say, listen to all of us and take nuggets away from each of us. Um, but uh, the word success to me is, is really the key here, not mindset, not habit, it's success. And I say, you know, be thoughtful, be really thoughtful of how you define that word because that really is what it's built on that's mm. the foundation and the last thing you you ultimately want to do is develop a great mindset and great habits and haven't spent the time thinking about success and then you achieve it and saying oh my this isn't quite what i was expecting mm. and um i tell you a quick little story um with, with my my kids um they they do these um TED Talks at their school, which I think is a, a great, great educational opportunity for the kids. They have to stand up and find their topics. And so we were kicking around ideas um, with my daughter for her, for her TED Talk. And, um, you know, so one of the ideas uh, that we talked about was, you know, something, uh, you know, like she wanted to talk about, you know, uh, having a fulfilling life. And, um, and that got us talking about, you know, um, an interesting angle here is, um, what if, what if um, seconds of happiness was currency? What if seconds of happiness, each second of happiness was a currency? Then we could all be a millionaire in a month, multi-millionaire. Ah. We could all be billionaires in our lifetimes. And so she ended up running with that concept of who wants to be a billionaire and the currency became seconds of happiness. And I love that. I thought ah. it's just a wonderful, wonderful concept. And it just says... Think, think really hard about the first word, success, and what that really is going to mean for you and think very strategically and very holistically about that. And then begin to work towards mindset mm -hmm. and begin to work towards the habits that will evolve over time. So not to belabor it, those are some thoughts. All I'm going to say is I, I hope that you're going to share the TED Talk with us because I'm dying, dying to see that. And how brilliant is that? You know, who wants to be a billionaire? How many, the secrets of happiness? Like, that's incredible. And watch out. She is, how old now, Fred? 13. She's 13. Watch out. Like, honestly, like Cam Shell yesterday started his first business at 14. I think she's, uh, she's already there, right? It's, it's incredible. I love, love, love that. And I think it's really important to go back to the success success habits. I know that one of my biggest takeaways um, at the Billionaire Beach House Mastermind, which was stunning, I know that, um, I don't know if we have the video, I don't know, um, gentlemen, if you are able to play the video for me, because that was pretty You're an avid aviation enthusiast. Okay, so a helicopter, you've got some jets, you know, just a couple of them. Um, you've got a really nice car collection. And I'm, I'm sorry that I cropped off the car. I don't even know what kind of car that is. I'm, I'm going to say, can you please tell me what kind of beautiful, I love black, but you have this gorgeous, gorgeous, what, what type of car was that? That was a 1961 Cadillac. Okay. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, I, I'll tell in you. In good condition. Yeah, I, I got to tell you a quick little story on that 1961 Cadillac, and I do love uh, collecting uh, cars and classic cars. I, I live in a, a, a town called uh, Wellington. I'm not there right now. You can see the mountains in the back. I'm up in the mountains uh, during the summer. But uh, one of the big things in Wellington is a very horse community, equestrian community, and polo is kind of a, a weekend, uh, uh, you know, activity there. So I'd taken the uh, the 61 Cadillac there to the uh, out there to, to the uh, polo game. And if you've been to polo, you know, they ring around the field, the cars ring around the field. It's kind of a tailgating, fun, fun. I activity. haven't been there yet. You're going to invite okay. me next well, year, right? Well, hopefully you'll, you'll come. 
And um, a, a lady, she had to be in her 80s, you know, comes walking up and looking at the car. And she has this, this smile on her face. And she looks at me and she says, 1961 Cadillac. And I was like, I was impressed. I said, wow, how did you know that? And she said, I got my first kiss in a 61 Cadillac. <laughs> And it, it sort of made me realize in that moment that I'm not really preserving a car, I'm preserving memories, I'm preserving a, a time. And, uh, you know, I, I love it because, uh, you know, anybody who does collect uh, old cars, we don't really consider ourselves the owners, we're the stewards, and somebody's been caring for that car since 61, it's my turn. Uh, someday it will pass from me on to the next steward. I've got cars that date back to the early 1900s and we're just part of that chain of stewardship. So it really is something I, I enjoy a lot knowing that, uh, you know, moments like that really make it worth it, knowing that I'm preserving some beautiful memories and a beautiful time for people. I love this story. I thought she was going to say maybe that she was um, you know, racing. I don't know. I thought it was going to be a little bit more racy, to be honest, but a first kiss is really innocent and cute. So we'll go with that. That's amazing. Um, so I, I, I'm going to talk about the entrance. Um, but I have to talk before I talk about that really wow entrance, because I thought, oh my God, that's so impressive. I want that. I can achieve that. And, you know, if it's, it's something in your vision that you want to achieve, I, I think anything is possible, but um, you can tell me a little bit more about the background, but before I lose my thought and the um, success habits, what I took away that was most impactful to me as I worked towards having my own helicopter fly down and Monica's hopping out of the helicopter, maybe you could fly me that day, um, Fred, can you pick me up? <laughs> um, so I think what was really important is when you talked, you said, okay, what is what you're starting your business out? You're going to have a mindset for the first zero to a hundred thousand. Actually, I think you used just, why not just jump to the million first zero to a million. And you have this mindset on how you operate your business. And then you said the next milestone is going to be from 1 million to 10 million. And I'm like, okay, that's a lot of hard work in between there. But yeah, okay, I get that. And, and then 10 million to 100 million. Okay, we're talking millions now. And then from 100 million to a billion. And you went through each segment of that. And I was like, mesmerized because I immediately took back into going okay everything that I do know I'm gonna have to completely forget about it and start learning a new way of doing things if I want to get to that next level and if I got through that even to like the, 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 the million part and into the hundred million part forget about all that you got to do something different and then when you get to the billionaire part it's about what you talk about you're a steward you're now a steward of business and knowledge, but you keep learning and growing. So I just, I have so much respect for the ability that you're sharing your knowledge. And while you may see, you know, there's lots of other people, but you've been through each phase. And a lot of those phases, a lot of people never get to. Like there, there's that 1% of what you've achieved. So I would love for you um, to share, how, how did it make you feel? Do you, do you, still get lit up when you get to, you know, drop down and inspire people the way that you do as a steward of business? I would say uh, I, I absolutely do. I think that's far more satisfying to me than, you know, sitting in the helicopter, for instance. It's, it's really th those moments to connect with all those people that are there um, you know, wanting to, to, to move their businesses onto the next level. I, I find that as, as certainly maybe as I've gotten older, uh, maybe it's as I've had children and they're growing up, uh, that you find a, a deeper satisfaction in, in those, uh, uh, you know, those relationships mm. and you start thinking, you know, differently. That's why I say, you know, this, this idea that um, as business grows, we have to uh, change with it as our life changes over time and our children grow, we have to change. You know, uh, you, you probably got many out there that, that can probably relate to the idea that what worked as a parent when they were, you know, uh, 
when they weren't yet a teenager isn't going to work when they're a teenager. You know, I mean, you know, and they're small. You can say, don't do this. And, and they don't do it. And a teenager, you say, don't do this. And now you got a confrontation, you know, so, so you have to change. You have to evolve. We have to change. They're going to change. Our businesses are going to change. And uh, I, I think that is, um, you know, one of the one of the lessons I've, I've, I've really learned that I want people to take away um, this this evolution of our lives, uh, evolution of our businesses. Uh, is is such an important concept, and and many of these things, Monica, you know, you learn the hard way. Uh, to be honest with you, and 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 most lessons are paid for, um, you know, and that's what, one of the reasons I think we remember them because very often some of these lessons we pay a very very hard price for. Mm. Uh, and, and certainly, uh, I, I, one of the skills I've tried to develop over the the, the, the recent years is I, I think most of my great learnings have been. Uh, always preceded by bad, bad decisions and bad judgments and mistakes, honestly, my own mistakes, and occasionally sometimes the mistakes of others. Uh, so I've tried to develop that, that skill now of learning from the mistakes of others. I find it's a little less costly and can be just as valuable. Uh, so <laughs> Those are great words. And I think that resonates with everybody right now, Fred, because, you know, it's, we're, constant like right now we're pivoting we're experimenting we're innovating and some of these will be hugely successful wins but some of them will be huge disasters and you know all of those things add up to the next big thing or or what we're supposed to be doing that open that failure is the lesson that we're going to need to do to to move forward but um thank you for sharing um and being so um, relatable. And I think that's what, what really inspired me is what I love most about um, you as a strong advocate for support her, um, is that you're very relatable. Well, you may have all of the zeros behind your names and you've owned lots of things. Your responsibility to being a steward of business is, is really where you are right now, but you're so relatable because you have not forgotten how hard it was to get there at all like not once not one day and you make others feel so how would you say I, I i'm just going to speak from my own experience you make me feel valued and that is a true sign of i support her and you know so what suggestions as i you know i'm going to prop you up as one of my you know uh, supporters like what can you do to share with others that are like how can you support and advocate for women what advice can you give them well, well first of all Monica, I absolutely love support her. I love those words together. My mom is 93 years old, a former teacher. Well, I shouldn't say former. When you're a teacher, you're a teacher your whole life. She still has that big teacher's heart. And, and it's so evident when, when I'm with her or the kids are, or the grandkids are with her, or the great grandkids are with her right now. And uh, it's, it's certainly um, a privilege to support her. And it inspires me to support her and, and to recognize that, that those are words that are not about support her with my mom, but to support women everywhere. Um, you know, I absolutely believe that when we do that, we're lifting up our own life. We're, we're lifting up our businesses. We're lifting up our world. We're lifting up our future. Uh, so you don't have a stronger advocate. I think it's wonderful what, what, what the Universal Network, Women's Network is doing. And, and I love the support her uh, movement as well. Uh, you, you know, I mean, one of the, a couple suggestions for, for those out there thinking of what you can do to support her. You know, now, now Monica, you know, one of the things that I, I like to do is, is, you know, coach and mentor. Um, you know, I can always go out and make more money. Um, but I can't go out and make more time. So really, sometimes the most valuable thing that we can give, and that really is the most valuable to others, is our time and really giving that time. And so I would encourage people to, to use their time to lift up others mm -hmm. and to support her that way. Uh, other things that we can do in our business is as, as your business grows, you're going to need more and more vendor partners to grow. They're part of your team. They're, they're, they really are partners. And, and, and to look and, and to make sure that you're supporting uh, women businesses, to build infrastructures as your company grows, to make sure that we're finding ways to, again, lift women up, to give them the leadership and the, and the skills to, to run our companies. Uh, you know, so there's, there's advocacy groups that we can support, um, such as yours and others that we know that are, that are supporting women. 
Um, I, I think there's a lot of things we can do, but sometimes people are small and they say, well, you know, I, I can remember this guy, uh, uh, you know, I was talking to, I mean, he was already a billionaire in his mind, you know, and how much he was going to donate to this cause and that cause. And, you know, and, and but it really isn't. It's that get into the habit now, even when you're small, you might not even have the currency, but you do have the currency. That currency is probably the most valuable currency that we have. It is our time. And as I say, that is the, 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 the number one thing I would suggest is give some of that currency away of your time to support her. Mm. Beautiful. I wrote that down because I think that's really, really important is, you know, in the space where people are scrambling to, you know, just, you know, pivot and keep their businesses going is human currency. Um, it's value. That's all the experience that you built. And I get that human uh, currency. You, you're so free with your human currency for me. I'm so grateful. Um, so let me ask, we've got a couple more questions left and I know we're running over time, but this is really important. I'm happy to have your, um, your, you, you here with the interview here. As a business is looking to relaunch and rebuild and recover, what are your thoughts on the challenges and opportunities that we face? Well, um, I, I probably have a, a few years left on the number uh, uh, edge on, on, on the number of the viewers here, but I, I want to put it in perspective. And I think about people in, in my life that, that, that have been very close to me, going back to my grandfather, who was born actually in the 1800s, the, the late 1800s, and he went through World War I, went through the pandemic of 1918. I mean, this is a man I knew and talked with and loved deeply went through the Great Depression as a businessman. I think about my parents and um, World War II, what they went through and, and, and the polio fears of the 40s and the 50s, um, uh, you, you know, assassination of a president. I think about my lifetime. I remember 1968 um, and, and, the, and the movements and the assassinations. I think of the oil shocks. I think of 9-11. Uh, uh, I think of the, 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 the great recession and the, and the, the financial credit collapse. Um, you know, I, I guess one thing we can say is we look back a, a, against the, the sweep of time is the, these, um, these unexpected events happen with some regularity, it seems like, that utterly disrupt our lives if we know it. And yet, I, I'm certainly very bullish on humanity. We've made it through all of them. We're going to make it through this one. And actually, we're going to come out uh, better and stronger and wiser and better prepared for the next time. I think about 9-11, that may be something a lot of people can relate to, is that I remember after 9-11, um, you know, and, and it may have been more traumatic here in, in, in the U.S., but it was a world event, but I, I can remember people were afraid to go outside. Uh, there was an invisible enemy out there. Every car was a potential terrorist bomb. We didn't know. Every airplane, I mean, it, it was just, a, it was a very odd time, and and, and there, was a, there was a great fear. And, and, and we did get back to normal and we will get back to normal, but we will change. And, and there is just going to be this incredible wave of opportunity that is coming as there was after 9-11. You think about the incredible investments in infrastructures, in security, for example, in every locality and every business, so many things took place. Uh, the same thing happened after the, the Great Recession. So much investment and in, in poli new policies came out that probably prepared us financially for this event. And many, um, many, uh, you know, great opportunities are going to emerge out of this. Um, there's going to be such a focus on, we, we've learned kind of those weak points in our system, you know, our, our distribution networks, our supply networks, our healthcare systems, our education system. It's, you know, we've held it together, okay? But there's going to be great opportunities to build those because it's revealed great opportunities for us. And there's going to be great opportunities in health and education and supply systems. So I'm bullish. I'm very bullish. Me too, Brad. You know that. I'm with you. Yeah. Great opportunities are coming. Um, you know, so, you know, st stay focused, stay positive, stay calm right now. Okay, so, and this is my last question, and literally, I could have you, like, another 20, 30, and everybody's, like, going, okay, stay, stay longer, um, but I know you're always thinking of the next, Fred, 
and uh, I get all excited because I know kind of about what where this question is going and super excited because you talk about opportunities. So Fred, what is next? Well, right now what we're working on is, uh, I, I, I guess I've got this concept, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about certain trends in society. One of those is healthcare and uh, another is education, I've, as I've talked about, and, and, and a third is, is, is adult learning and uh, adult growth as well. Um, you know, I think one of the, the big revolutions in healthcare is uh, going to actually be what can we do to keep people healthy in their home and how can the healthcare system reach into the homes? Mm -hmm. um, I think in education, we're learning that perhaps, um, you know, what we've done is we've kind of think remote education now is taking the classroom and putting it on Zoom. And uh, you have a teacher with a bunch of uh, students out there. And I think that we're, we're understanding maybe it's not as simple as that. And, um, you know, one of the things I think about um, as I relate back to, to, to healthcare, for instance, what makes healthcare so powerful is caring doctors, caring healthcare professionals that work with us and know us individually. And that's what also makes education such a powerful concept is a teacher who can work with a student. And, you know, one of the things I, I, I literally would love to see transform in, in time is, is right now we sometimes look at the classroom and we say there's, uh, you know, there's a, a classroom of 20 kids, a classroom of 20 children, and, and it's not that. It's a classroom of one child 20 times. And so this future of being able to connect people on a one-on-one -on -one basis and how do we scale one-on-one -on -one, those relationships you know we've got social media where it's very much one to many and people can have many followers but are those truly meaningful one-on-one -on -one relationships because that's where life develops not only its meaning but so much of our education and inspiration and coaching mm -hmm. and so that's what we're working on now as a platform that literally scales one-on-one -on -one around the concepts of education adult learning coaching and improving healthcare into the homes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Monica, you are going to be one of the early adopters of this technology. So stay tuned with Monica to learn more about it. She, we're very excited to work with the Universal Women's Network on, on this as, we, as, as, as an early rollout. Within the coaching I'm super market. excited and I am not ready to spill the beans yet because we've still got some work to do but I have to say I am so incredibly excited and everybody that knows me knows that when I get excited I can barely talk um, because my heart starts racing and I can see opportunities and as you know I think big 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 um, which is exactly that's why we get along so well visionaries um, but I just want to say I really appreciate um, your support, being a support her um, and an advocate of not just myself, but for our business and women everywhere. I think it's really important um, that we raise each other up. And I want to say also thank you to JT Fox. Um, JT, um, it wouldn't have happened without JT. JT's a support her. He's been working nonstop behind the scenes. He is the... Uh, you know, really the reason that I, that we connected and, um, you know, if it wasn't for the, uh, you know, mega success opportunity that he had, you and I would not have connected back scenes and had a great conversation. And, and then, you know, when I went to that billionaire beach house mastermind and I have, I see so much value in connection and learning and growth from everybody. And I love how you have, um, you, you say this over and over again is I, yeah, there's lots of great speakers. Take knowledge from everyone. Build on those relationships and focus on your human currency. So, uh, Fred, it's been an absolute pr pleasure. I am beyond grateful. This was a highlight of my day. Um, Tra Unstoppable Tracy is going to be closing, as you know, Tracy. Um, amazing. Absolutely. That's a you know, I'm, I'm just a light warm up act for 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 the Unstoppable Tracy. Yeah, so, so you were the for her. <laughs> you were the pre warm up for Unstoppable Tracy. Uh, she can't hear that. She'll find out about that later, and she'll love it. Um, but I want to say thank you uh, very much for taking time out to talk with us today, and just uh, because we always do, we have to capture the meeting, right? Okay, smile, Fred. There. And nice choice of hats today, I have to say. Thank you. I like the white. <laughs> Thank you very much, Fred. And to everybody that's watching, stay tuned. There is way more to share.
but I'm not sharing yet. Are we, Fred? We're waiting. So okay, thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, Fred.